Even though I've been on a lot of cruises, something that I still like to do is explore in the cruise ports of call. And we've had a lot of amazing shore excursions, but something I rarely talk about is some of those shore excursions that I actually regret and I would not book again. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, often I am asked for recommendations for specific tours and excursions in certain cruise ports of call. And of course I do share our experiences mostly on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, and occasionally within my review videos on YouTube as well. So it begs the question, are there some excursions that I regret and that I would not book again? Yes, and unfortunately in the case of one of them, this is something that I have recommended in the past and I would not do it again, so I may not even recommend it again. Now I will share that with you, but of course I always want these videos to be helpful. So I'm also gonna share some excursions that I would do instead and exactly why they didn't work for us because maybe these excursions are going to be your cup of tea. Now before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, I'm going to start off with one that I think is a little bit controversial. It is Megan's Bay in St. Thomas. I love St. Thomas and I really do think Megan's Bay is an absolutely gorgeous beach. We've gone there many times and I've recommended going there in particular on your own. However, recently we went to Megan's Bay with a cruise line excursion and it reminded me of sometimes why I don't enjoy cruise line excursions. So here's what happened. We got to the beach and it was extremely crowded. Now there were several ships in St. Thomas that day. So I think that that played a big part. And of course, Macon's Bay is the most popular beach for tourists. So that does make a lot of sense. But when we got there, we left the ship area around 10 o'clock AM. So we got there a little bit late in the morning. And of course that meant this beach was crowded. Now in particular, what we didn't like is that the chairs, when we rented them, they were literally one on top of the other. And while Megan's Bay is absolutely beautiful, this did kind of ruin the experience. Now I do have a little tip. If you go to Megan's Bay, walk all the way to the left, it is going to be much less crowded. Even if you can't get a chair there, I would sooner sit on a towel. But the other part of this excursion was the fact that we had to leave after about two hours. So by the time we finally relaxed, we had to get back to the ship. So there is a moral to the story. I do think if you do decide to go to Megan's Bay in particular, maybe go on your own and leave very early or take a ship excursion that you can go very early and that you can head back to the ship a little bit later on on your own, especially if you are there for a longer day. Or perhaps even better, St. Thomas is absolutely gorgeous so I do think maybe check out one of the less busy less touristy beaches they're all going to be a little bit touristy but in particular one that is absolutely gorgeous is Trunk Bay in St. John. Okay let's head over to Nassau to an excursion that I did regret that is an excursion that went to the Baja Mar Resort. Now I booked this through the cruise line and to be fair it was beautiful it was clean and it was safe. However when it came to the resort, I guess it just didn't meet the expectations I had. It was very much a water park orientated resort, which I think I would have liked in fairness if my children were young. However, I made a little bit of a mistake. I went on the website for Baja Mar and I did look at some of the videos about it and I saw the beautiful resort that was closer to the beach. I had read a description about the world-class dining that was even, I think, on the Cruise Line website. However, when we did get there, we didn't have access to that beach resort area. It wasn't part of the excursion. And there was a fast food style menu that was specifically for cruise guests. Now drinks weren't included and we weren't even able to substitute a Coke for a bottle of water. Now, truthfully, while we were there, we did wonder why did we leave our cruise ship where we had a drink package and it really was absolutely gorgeous on our cruise ship. So we actually did take transportation at our own expense back to the ship early. Now, again, you might love this excursion if you're there with young children or even teenagers who want to do a lot of water slides. So I still would recommend it. 
but it really wasn't for us. However, I do have another recommendation when you're in Nassau that I think is more reasonably priced and easy to get to by foot, and it is the Margaritaville Resort. Now, I don't believe this is available with the cruise line, but you can book it directly on their website. Okay, heading over to Canada, New England, which by the way, I love that itinerary, but there was one excursion that we did that I was a little bit bored. And I do think this might be just me, but it is something to note if this is you as well. So we were in Sydney, Nova Scotia, and we went over to the Alexander Graham Bell Museum. And well, the museum, it was a little smaller than what I expected. It certainly was interesting, but what I realized was after about a half an hour, I had pretty much gone through the museum to the extent that I wanted to. And then I was a little bit bored and then I had to wait for a couple of hours till we were heading back to the cruise ship. So in hindsight, I probably should have done something that was a little bit more active and I may want to skip museums in the future. Now I know museums could be very interesting, but they are not for everybody, in particular for cruise short excursions. Now, please let me know, are you a museum person? Yes or no, down in the comments below. Oh, and by the way, something that we did love was when we were in Halifax, Nova Scotia, we did go over to Peggy's Cove. We even had a chance to eat lobster there and we had an amazing time. Number four, the Sloth Sanctuary in Costa Rica. Now, I was really looking forward to this excursion and I will share with you where I did another sloth sanctuary excursion that I really can recommend and that I really did enjoy. But in particular, this one, we were a large group, again, coming from the cruise ship. It was a pretty long day. It was supposed to be, I believe, five hours. It turned out to be seven because we didn't get back on time. It really took a long amount of time. And a good part of that had to do with the fact that we had to wait so long once we were at the sloth sanctuary to actually enter the area where the sloths were. Now it did start off with a really nice canoe ride, really enjoyed that part, but between the canoe ride and going into the sloth sanctuary area, which was basically cages where the sloths were, we had a break of about an hour and a half where we had the gift shop to go into and we could purchase a bag of chips. So there was no lunch available at the sloth sanctuary. And again, we had this really long waiting time. Now, to be fair, some people really loved the excursion, so I'm definitely not gonna say that it's not for everybody, but I guess coming after our Sloth Sanctuary excursion in Roatan, where we could actually interact with different animals and get up close with the sloths, and in general, it was just a more fast-moving excursion, and it was a smaller group, I much preferred that. Number five, now this is an excursion that is pretty popular in many Caribbean islands in the Bahamas. You might have seen it and even have thought of booking it for yourself and it is a glass bottom boat. Now in Half Moon Key, which by the way, we absolutely love, but we did a glass bottom boat excursion and I really should have read up more on glass bottom boats rather than just reading the description of this tour because we just couldn't see very much. The window itself is very small. You have to sort of lean over to kind of see it. And it basically was a boat ride. Now there's nothing wrong with a boat ride, but it was definitely a little bit underwhelming. Now, something that I would have preferred instead is a catamaran or a snorkeling excursion. And something that Frank and Ethan did recently in Half Moon Key that they absolutely recommend is the jet skiing excursion. Now, please let me know if there are any excursions that you've ever done that you regret. Please let me know down in the comments below. And let me know as well if there is a cruise port to call in particular that you would like to have a little bit of a cruise port guide or even some recommendations of best excursions. Please let me know down in the comments below. And please remember, just because I didn't have the best experience on an excursion doesn't mean that the same thing will happen to you. These are my experiences only. Now, I hope that you did enjoy this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.